Welcome to Beyond the Lab, a series by the Office of Career Development within the Biomedical Research, Education, and Training Department of the Vanderbilt University School of Medicine. My name is Kate Stewart, and I'm here today with Elizabeth Conrad. Thanks for coming. Um, Elizabeth was a graduate of the Molecular Physiology and Biophysics program, graduated in 2015. We're so glad to have you back as a recent graduate, new alum. Yes. Um, so tell me what you did here at Vanderbilt. I worked with a protein in particular. It was a transcription factor called MAFB, and I uh, was focused on its role in the beta cell. Not only how it makes a beta cell a beta cell, but the function, the insulin secreting, glucose sensing function of the pancreatic beta cell. And so what I did is I generated different permutations of mutant mice and then ran assays to assess these different functions um, without the protein in the pancreas, without the protein in the pancreatic beta cells. So it was a developmental and a physiological project. Okay, cool. So what have you done since Vanderbilt? So it's been, a, it's been a, actually an alternative kind of winding path, even though it's been a, a pretty short amount of time so far. Um, the, the time period in between when I was finishing up and still mostly um, wrapping up my lab work, I actually interned at a local biotech startup that had um, two early phase clinical trials uh, going. And then as I was finishing up at, at Vanderbilt, I was brought on by one of my um, good friends that used to be at Vanderbilt, who was the head brewer at Tennessee Brew Works. And they were expanding their brewing capacity and also bringing in a bottling line. So she brought me in and we um, amped up the lab components of not only the brewing process, but uh, the, the bottling and, and facilitating the shelf life of the product. Uh, so that was a great experience, and I met a lot of awesome people along the way. And um, in the meantime, I uh, sh showed up to a beer and biotech event, which is it's kind of a, it's a really informal networking opportunity that's hosted by Life Science Tennessee. And one of the panelists was one of my business mentors from a tech venture in the relative recent past. And she, from there, brought me in for an interview and basically hired me pretty quickly after that. Okay, so what do you, tell me about what do you do now. So right now I'm a um, junior research associate at Cumberland Pharmaceuticals. Okay, so what do you do every day? Like, like percentage-wise, what do you do every day? So the, the short answer to that is a lot of different things. Okay. I, I work at a desk, um, but the, the cool thing about it being a small company is that everybody not only has the responsibility, but the opportunity to play a lot of different roles. And so one of the things that I'm primarily responsible for is the literature pharmacovigilance program. And what that entails in a smaller section of words, or segment of words, sorry, <laughs> um, is we have five products that are, on, that are on the market and we're responsible for monitoring adverse events. And so what I do is I keep track of literature public, of publications uh, that report different adverse events with our products or the active ingredients of our products. And if they're what the FDA defines as a non-expected or serious event, uh, then I determine if it's on our, our product insert, which is those big, really thin pieces of paper that come with any prescription that you ever get. Yeah. Um, and if, if it's not, then I need to document and report that to the FDA. And um, among other things, I facilitate a lot of the clinical trials that we have that are either in development, so that involves you know making plans and putting together protocols, as well as any other various FDA communications. Because in, in addition to the pharmacovigilance, um, as I had alluded to, there are a lot of different hats to wear. And since we have not only products that are on the market, but we have uh, compounds and potential drugs that are at all different stages of development. So this company takes compounds that are promising out of lab and brings them all the way through the different clinical uh, trial phases all the way into market. And so there's a small group of people that are working on all aspects of this development, even in the post-marketing regulatory aspect. So I facilitate with any kind of FDA 
communications that pertain to not only our marketed products, but products in development and planning for clinical trials, uh, as well as um, monitoring. Um, for example, if someone needs to be an unblinded monitor for the company, the sponsor, um, then we ensure that things are running appropriately without um, disturbing the integrity of the clinical trial as, as the involved participants are monitored cool. or are blinded, sorry. Right. That's great. Okay, so I want to go back to that, but tell me first when you were, you were talking about your long line of things that you've done, even in a short time, you did an internship while you were in your training. So tell me about your internship and that experience um, and what that kind of taught you. I did. So first there was, no, <laughs> I worked, uh, I, I did an internship at New Cert. Okay. Um, and this was actually something that I very luckily stumbled into because what happened is I uh, attended a networking event and um, I had a wonderful conversation with a guy that had been around Nashville for a long time and knew the, the science business realm really well. And what he did is he gave me five contacts and um, I got in touch with each of them and asked them if I could take them to coffee. Yeah. And every single one of them replied and took me up on the offer. And one of them offered me the opportunity to, to help out for a little while as they were um, getting these clinical trials up and running. Yeah. So you learn, I'm sure, a lot from that that you can now translate into what you're doing cur currently. Absolutely. And most of that was... Um, observational, you know, just sitting in on meetings and seeing what it actually entails to take something um, out of the lab and into the patients right. is a lot more complicated than I had realized when I was in the lab. Um, and it's it's very uh, team oriented and there are a lot of different aspects that fit into it. And it's not just one kind of job type. It takes a lot of different um, job descriptions. And so I was able to, in a sense, shop around a little bit and get an idea of what different professions fit into this whole drug development process. Yeah. Okay. So tell me now about the Tennessee Brew Works opportunity, because this is like a complete offshoot of what you are doing now. And I even had the internship in. Um, and I know that you were sort of filling a hole for this role, but tell me more about um, sort of the differences and like the things that you learned in that short time. You know, the, the brewing was actually had a similar lifestyle in a sense to lab life. Um, if anything, the hours were probably even more crazy and erratic um, because they were so, I mean, it was also a startup in a sense that, you know, if you're there till 2 a.m. trying to get a bottling line running, you still need to get up at five in the morning to mill in the grains because you're the one that's also brewing the beer that you're trying to put in the bottles. Yeah. Um, so this internship was actually through through Brett, um, but coincidentally, it was one of my good friends from when she was in graduate school in Vanderbilt. And the cool thing is, uh, she's a phenomenal brewer, very creative, but her model organism in graduate school was um, yeast. So she knew the ins and outs of yeast. And, you know, she pretty quickly became the person that everybody in, in the brewing community went to for advice. It was pretty cool to be able to work under her and it turned out that we worked really well together. And so the internship very quickly turned into a, why don't you stay here because we need you. <laughs> um, and it was, a, I mean, it was a great time because everything was growing and we were expanding a lab from scratch. So basically we wanted to make sure that we were making clean beer and then we wanted to make sure that we were getting the longest shelf life possible as we moved into the bottling line. Okay, so tell me about your job search. You know, you were talking a lot about your networking opportunities. Um, you know, what are some of the things that you wish that you knew before this whole thing started that you would know now um, as you're, you know, pursuing these networking opportunities and sort of doing the job search? You know, I wish that I wasn't so worried throughout it all. Okay. I was so frightened that there, there wasn't something for me or that I didn't have the skill set. Um, but the truth was that I did, and the main thing was about, or the main component was being confident and 
asserting to whoever you're talking to that you have you have skills that they would be interested in, um, but also that it was way less intentional than I thought it it would be. Um, it everything kind of seemed to come from a byproduct of pursuing things that I was interested in. When Brett started offering the modules, that was the tail end of my PhD program, and I had already figured out that I was really interested in um, the business side of science. I had done tech venture and absolutely loved it and kept up with context from that, be it a business mentor or even science advisors and my, my fellow teammates who have actually, some of them have gone into different aspects of the business of science as well. Yeah. Um, and from those experiences, they just inherently rolled into new experiences and opportunities by by showing up to things that I was interested in, by following up with people. And that was another thing about not being afraid. If you find the contact of someone who does something that you think that you're interested in or that you just want to know more about so that you can determine if you're interested in it, you've really got nothing to lose, especially as a student, um, just to shoot them an email and see if they're willing to talk to you. And you don't necessarily have to meet with them and tell them, I want a job from you right now. Right. Um, it's more of a discussion about learning what they do and don't like about their job. Um, and then from there, especially if you're interested, you're already on their radar and stuff does come up. I've definitely learned that too. So you have done, you did, you were talking about your five informational coffees with five different people. Mm -hmm. How did that go? Like, what were some of the questions that you asked and what were some of the things that you really learn from just interacting with those five folks? It was awesome. It was a ton of fun. And I mean, the, the first surprise was that everybody was so willing and open to me showing up. And um, I mean, to be honest, most of the time, like a couple of the times, they were the ones that treated me to lunch. So I felt kind of guilty that I had initiated. <laughs> um, but it was, it was just that. So I asked them, you know, what is it that you like about what you do? Um, what kind of lifestyle is it? How much do you use the science that you, because a lot of the people were from, initially from a similar background as me and they had taken different winding paths to get where they are. Um, and it was also pretty cool to see that most of them weren't very calculated paths. Um, it was more of a trial and error, much like what occurs in lab, but also um, by happenstance. So it was pretty cool to see um, not only people's willingness to share their experience, but there were a lot of different possibilities. And this is just within Nashville, so. Right. It was great. Okay, great. So you're currently in a good job. You love it. What are some of the things that you wish, um, like if trainees were interested in doing what you're doing now, what should they do to, to be prepared for that? Like what do you wish they would know as they're still in their training? I mean, apart from networking, there are so many opportunities as a student, specifically at Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt for those types of things. Um, TechVenture was not only an awesome networking opportunity, but it was really fun. And I got to spend time with other students, uh, be them other biomedical trainees or Owen business students, and see what their interests were and what kinds of um, different activities they had their hands in. Um, I also participated in a technology and commercialization module, which was awesome and another great opportunity for me to identify a mentor. And that's another thing. Um, you have your, your mentor in lab, and I've, most of the time I've found they're generally pretty supportive as long as you um, keep your lab work focused. They're supportive of you pursuing scientific applications outside the lab if that's what you're interested in. Um, and there are a lot of different ways to identify different types of mentors. And that was something that I also only discovered later in my PhD experience. Got it. Thank you so much for coming. We appreciate your time. Thank you.